Yeah, I saw a little thing on my phone this morning where this policeman um, pulls this guy up and he says, oh, um, you're speeding. And he said, no, he said, I'm just keeping up with the traffic. And the policeman said, there's no traffic here. And he said, yeah, I know, I'm that far behind. <laughs> Okay. Well, I hope this morning to be able to build you up in God's Word. That's what I hope to do. Did I mention the word hope? I did, didn't I? Well, that's the message this morning. We're going to preach for a few moments um, on the subject of hope. And I'm not um, over bright. I'm just an average guy. I'm not a scholar um, or anything like that. And if I was to write you a letter, you would probably find many spelling mistakes and not the commas in the right place or whatever. But I can assure you, some things are just not that hard. The word hope, if you just look it up in any Collins dictionary or anywhere or just Google um, the Greek word hope, you will find it's a primary word for desire, expectation, confidence. Usually with pleasure, you're desiring and looking for something. And so the illustration could be that um, the children are waiting for Dad to get home from work uh, to play ball with them before they go to the meeting. The object of their hope is Dad can come home and play with them. Or I might say that um, I'm hoping to get a job in the next couple of weeks. That's the object of my hope. Or I might say, I hope Wendy gets home safely. She's been out and I hope she arrives home safely. That's the object of my hope, that Wendy um, actually arrives home safely. But everybody has the ability to hope, to desire, to expect. But the thing is, they may or may not happen. And sometimes there's unfortunate circumstances and there may be a depression, there may be no work, there may be no money about and all of a sudden all these desires and expectations and hope you've had doesn't um, seem to, to be working. And some people will drift into hopelessness. Some people will want to take their lives. Some people will just shut themselves away. Some people will get terribly depressed. But I tell you what, if you know the author of hope, hallelujah, and we're going to go to our screen and our text in a second, but you see the difference between the non-Christian hope and the Christian's hope is that they are desiring, they are hoping, they are expecting, but it may or may not happen. But you see, real hope, the author, is not wishful thinking or hoping. He is actually a person. He's a person of the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. He is the author and finisher of our faith. He is the one we put our hopes and we put our trusts in. If we can have our text, please, we're Hebrews 6, verse 18. We call it the anchor. God cannot tell lies, and so his promises are vows, and are two things that can never be changed. We have to run to God for safety. That's something we go to him. Now his promises should greatly encourage us to take hold of the hope that is in front of us. This hope is like a firm anchor for our souls. And so we are encouraged to take hold of hope. We are to take hold of God's word. The Bible says he is the anchor uh, for our souls. And what could happen to a ship in an ocean if it had no anchor? You could have the biggest ship in the world, high tech, but what could happen if it had no anchor? Circumstances may arise that the hope of the ship was not in the captain, not in the engines, not in the crew, not in the compass, but in the anchor. When all else fails, there's hope in the anchor. And when we put our trust and faith in the author of hope, then he becomes an anchor for our souls and he stops us from drifting into hopelessness and despair. Ephesians 2.12. And the other thing is the difference between a non-Christian's hope and our Christian's hope is it may or may not come to pass. But with Jesus, hallelujah. Hallelujah the author and finish of our faith, he can change circumstances because he's a powerful and supernatural God. And that's the difference. And Ephesians 2.12 says, Remember that you were at that time separated 
from Christ, alienated from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers to the covenant of promise, having no hope and without God in the world. So non-Christians might think they have hope, but the Bible actually says without God you have no hope. Romans 15, 13 says, May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing so that by the power of the Holy Spirit you may abound in hope. The word abound means to abound, to excel, to super increase, to be excessive. So you can't be excessive in hope and believing and trusting and desiring and having confidence in God's word, in the author of hope. Now, Hebrews 11.1 1 says, Now faith is the substance of things hoped for. Now, faith is the substance of things hoped for. So if you're not hoping for and desiring anything in God, then faith isn't in action. But if you have hopes and desires in God, in his word, but you're not actually trusting and believing, it's still not in action. Faith and hope go together. You can't have one without the other. Faith is the substance of things hoped for. Hebrews 10.23 says, Let us hold fast to the confession of our hope without wavering, for he who promised is faithful. Psalm 71.5 says, For you, O Lord, are my hope, my trust, O Lord, from my youth. He is our hope. Hallelujah. Praise God. Well, he's not only just the anchor of our hope, but he, the author of hope, is also called the blessed hope. Titus 2, starting from verse 11, says, For the grace of God that brings salvation has appeared to all men. He appeared, he manifested, he showed up. Teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly lust, we should live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present age. Looking looking for the blessed hope and the glorious appearing of our great Saviour Jesus Christ. Looking or wait, we're confident, we're expecting, we have patience, we are looking for the blessed hope. 1 Thessalonians 4.16 says, For the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel and the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first, and those who are alive and remain shall be called up to meet him in, in the air, so we'll ever be with the Lord. Comfort one another um, with these words. And so we are looking forward to the blessed hope. Now, it's a blessed hope. That's what it just said in text, a blessed hope. It's the opposite of a cursed hope. The word blessed, again, you don't have to be a scholar with big words. Just, just look in any Greek dictionary. You'll find it means happy, fortunate and blessed. He's a blessed hope, happy, fortunate, and blessed. It says that the word is in the prolonged form, meaning extremely happy, extremely blessed, by, by extension, well off. And we need to understand that, see, Christ is well off. He is happy. He is blessed. So if he is blessed, then he is not depressed. Then he is not in unforgiveness. Therefore, he's not in bitterness. There's nothing in Christ that he doesn't have. And so he is our blessed hope. Then anything you need, he has. Hallelujah. All your desires and hopes can be in him if it's in his word because that's what he is. So it's a blessed hope. There's blessings as we're looking for him to appear. It's a visible hope. Ever since... Christ was born as a man. It's always been wanting to be a visible hope. Philip said to Nathaniel, come and see. Zacchaeus climbed up a tree so he could see. Paul says we look through a mirror dimly, but when we see him face to face. John seems to hinge all hopes on this thing. He says, and it does not yet appear what we shall be, but we know that when he appears, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he really is. So it's a blessed hope. It's going to be a visible hope. You're actually going to see him. It's a glorious hope. That's what it said, the glorious coming. 2 Timothy 4, 7 to 8, I have fought the good fight, I have finished the race, I have kept the faith. Finally, there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, 
which the Lord, the righteous judge, will give me on that day. And not only to me, but to all who loved his appearing. We're to love his appearing. We're looking forward to the glorious um, appearing. Hebrews 9.28 says, So Christ, having been offered once to bear the sins of many, will appear a second time, not to deal with sin, but to save those who are eagerly awaiting for him. Eagerly awaiting. Ephesians 1.18 says, Having the eyes of your heart enlightened, that you may know what is the hope to which he has called you and what are the riches of his glory and the inheritance of the saints. So it's a glorious coming. There's going to be crowns of righteousness. There's going to be rewards, hallelujah. It's going to be glorious for those who eagerly await him. So you see, our hope today... Right now, your hope, he, he is the anchor. He is the person. He is the anchor of your soul. All your hopes and desires are in him. He can stop you from drifting into hopelessness and despair. Oh, that's the present hope. But the hope of the future is he's a blessed hope. There's going to be a glorious appearing. He's coming. And there's an inheritance, there's a reward, there's eternal life. You'll be walking streets of gold. There will be no more pain. There will be no more sickness. That's the hope of the believer, hallelujah. But even though that's the hope of the believer, how many Christians are actually looking and waiting for him? Frank is good. But, you know, as I often talk to people and talk about the coming of the Lord or end times, this is what you usually hear. Oh, no, I don't want him to come now. I don't want him to come now. He can't come now. I want to see all my grandchildren grow up and get married. He can't come now. Oh, you're not waiting for his appearing? You're not loving his appearing? You're not looking for his appearing? Someone else says, oh, I'm only 25, 30 years old. He can't come yet. I don't want him to come yet. I've got a whole lifetime of dreams and visions that I want to achieve. Oh, you're not looking for the glorious appearing. You're not loving his appearing. You're not eagerly awaiting his appearing. Some other people, you'll be talking to them about about Christ coming in the end times. Oh, don't talk to me about that. Oh, people have been saying he's been coming for 50 years. He hasn't come. Oh, well, it's best to get on with preaching the gospel. Don't worry about that. Don't worry about it. Oh, I'm just a pan millennial. I'm just going to see how it all pans out. You know, I had to adjust my thinking too. We've got to realise though that we live in a world where there's no hope. And the non-believer, he doesn't have hope. He's without out hope, the Bible says. He may have wishes, desires that may come true and may not come true. But when you realise hope is a person and he is your hope now, he's the anchor of your soul now, he stops you from drifting into despair now, and if you want to have a future in the, in the coming up, then he's the hope of the believer. He's the blessed hope, hallelujah. He's the one that you're loving, he's appearing, you're eagerly awaiting for him to come. And puts a different light on it, doesn't it? Ouch. <laughs> how many of you here today and online, I wonder how many Christians are actually looking for him to come. I wonder will he come today, I wonder will he come soon. He is my hope. He is the one that's going to deliver me. He's the blessed hope. He's the one I'm looking for, waiting for. I'm loving his appearing. The next thing, and you see, it has it there, doesn't it? Looking for him. Loving his appearing. Eagerly waiting for him. You know, hope purifies us. 1 John 3, 2. Beloved, now we are children of God, and it has not yet been revealed what we shall be. But we know that when he's revealed, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. And everyone who has this hope in him purifies himself just as he is pure. Whoever commits sin also commits lawlessness. And so actually wants us to live right. But when he's revealed, we're going to see him as he is. I mean, having this hope purifies us. You know, like the Bible says, we don't know the hour of when he's coming. 
The Bible says to know the times and the seasons. The Bible says to be sober, to be watching, um, to, to be waiting. We're to be looking for him to come. Hallelujah. But knowing that he could come purifies me. Because when he comes, I want to be found living right. I want to be found pleasing to him. You know, we've all made mistakes, but when he comes, I want to be found being pleasing to him. I want him to say, well done, um, thy good and faithful servant. That's what I want. And knowing that he could come, that actually helps to purify me and keep me on my toes. And so you see, 1 Thessalonians 4.16 says, The Lord shall descend from heaven with a shout, the voice of the archangel and the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise, and those who are alive shall remain, be caught up in the clouds, to be forever with the Lord. Comfort one another with these words. I comfort you with those words this morning. Hallelujah. You're going to have a resurrection body. You're going to see him face to face. He's coming um, one day. But a few verses after that, it says, For God did not appoint us to wrath, but to obtain salvation through the Lord Jesus Christ. And back in the chapter or so before, talking about the end times again, in 1 Thessalonians 1.10, it says, And to wait for the Son of God, from his Son from heaven, whom he raised from the dead, Jesus, who delivers us from the wrath to come. Hallelujah. You might be looking for the Antichrist. You might be looking for the tribulation and the wrath to come. But I'm looking for Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. I'm looking for the glorious appearing of our great God and Saviour, Jesus Christ. And I hope you are this morning. And the only hope we have in this world is the blessed hope. He's the anchor of our souls and he's the hope for the believer. Amen. And you believe that this morning? That's your hope. Hallelujah. Father, we just thank you for your word, Lord. We thank you that you are a great God. Lord, we thank you that you can stop us from drifting into despair and hopelessness. We thank you, Lord, that in all this uncertainty around us, that um, we have a future. We will see you face to face. We will have crowns. We will have rewards. Uh, We will live in the new city and the new Jerusalem. Hallelujah. We thank you, Lord, that you are the hope of the believer. But you do say to all who love is appearing, to those who are eagerly waiting, to those who are looking for his appearing. We thank you, Lord, that we are the ones to be found uh, looking for you and having our desires and hopes in you. In Jesus' name, amen. And we pray that everybody can take hold of that hope this morning and be blessed in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. That's good. And I think that's a good note, isn't it, to take communion and uh, take the bread and the wine because he is our hope. He is our only hope. Amen? Amen. Praise God. Oh, we thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord, when you died on that cross for us, that we have hope. Lord, whatever happened on that cross, your broken body, um, your blood was shed for us. Lord, that um, you are blessed, you are fortunate, you are happy. You are well off. And as people of God, we can be well off, we can be blessed, we can be happy. Because his body was broken and bruised for us. Because his blood was poured out. We thank you, Lord, that you are our hope, you are our anchor that stops us from drifting. So just as we take the bread this morning, we remember that you are the anchor for our souls. Thank you, Lord. And as we take the cup now, you died for us and you shed your blood, but we also remember it says that you appeared once for the salvation of sin. And because he appeared for that, and he became a high priest and he's interceding for us at the right hand of the Father, because of that he can appear and come again. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And the blood wasn't just for us to have our sins forgiven, but it's also that we can have eternal life. Hallelujah. 
And so we thank you, Lord, that you are our future hope and all our hopes and trusts are in you. And we remember that as we drink this morning. Hallelujah. Praise God. Who is your hope? Jesus. Jesus. He's the anchor for your souls and he's your future hope. So I hope that blessed you. God bless you. Have a great day. I'm just going to stand up the front here for a few minutes if anyone needs prayer. But <laughs> no, that's, that's, that's enough for one morning. But God is good. Amen.